September is here. After a long summer of baseball, it's time for things to get really exciting. September is the final month of the regular season in North America, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan, and the postseason race heats up day by day. In Mexico, it's time for the championship series, the Serie del Rey. The North and South championships were just decided over the weekend, so we now have our two teams for that. It's also title time in Europe. The matchups for the Czech series and the final series in Germany were decided over the weekend. Holland series? Not yet. That'll come a little later. Italian series? Done. Champion was crowned on Saturday, and that's where we'll start today. 30 teams in the Serie A level of Italian baseball, but they are not created equally. In recent years, there's been a big three, Bologna, San Marino, and Parma. Last year, they were about equal during the regular season. Then Bologna rolled in the playoffs, on the way to their fourth Italian series title in six years. This year, the big three were once again equally dominant at the top of the regular season standings. They all reached the semis where they were joined by Maserata. Maserata proved to not be a pushover fourth team. They dug themselves into a deep hole, dropping their first three against Parma, but then came roaring back with wins in games four, five, and six. In game seven, Maserata led three to nothing after six innings, and they play seven inning games in the Italian league. In the seventh, Parma scored four runs to walk it off and earn a trip to the Italian series. In the other semifinal, San Marino sent the defending champs home in five games. That means we would get a new champion this time. San Marino, the champions in 2021 and 2022, were seeking their third title in four years. Parma jumped out to a 3-0 lead. All the games were pretty close. San Marino got a 7-5 win in Game 4 to stay alive, but Game 5 was dominated by Parma. Two runs in the second, two in each of the last two innings. San Marino was held to just one hit. Parma 6-0 to take the series in five their first Italian series title since 2010, their 11th overall. After needing four runs in the final inning of Game 7 to escape the semifinals, Parma rolled through this one to become the 2024 Italian series champions. Pitching was the big story for Parma. Matteo Bocchi tossed five scoreless innings with nine strikeouts for the Game 7 win, but one hitter of theirs you might recognize is third baseman Alex Liddy, the first born and raised Italian to play in MLB three seasons with the Seattle Mariners just over a decade ago. He was a big part of this Parma team's success. That included a home run in Game 7. This came just one day after 22-year-old Sam Aldegheri made his MLB debut with the LA Angels, becoming the first born and raised Italian pitcher. So it was a big week for Italian baseball. Look forward to more Italian prospects and another exciting season in Serie A next summer. One month left of the season in Japan. NPB's 143-game schedule comes to an end one week into October. We've got an exciting race for the top spot in Central League and for the last spot in the Climax Series in Pacific League. In Central League, the Hiroshima Carp lead the way, the team with the longest title drought in NPB going back to 1984, a postseason team a year ago. The one key ingredient to their success? Pitching. Three starting pitchers, Daichi Osera, Masato Morishita, and Hiroki Tokoda, are in the top six in ERA in Central League, all of them sub two. Bullpen's good too, led by closer Ryoji Kurubayashi, tied for the league lead with 35 saves. This team's been getting stronger as the season goes on. They were 15 and nine in August. Second is the Yomiuri Giants, just a half game back. They've really benefited from the rebound of starting pitcher Tomiyuki Sugano. For a long time, the team's ace, one time the Central League MVP, Sugano had been on the decline, but this year he is 13-2 with a 166 ERA, back to being the team's ace. Shosei Togo had taken over that role, and he is still good, but Sugano is the top pitcher now. So, two great starting pitchers, but it's a team better known for offense. Kazuma Okamoto, 21 home runs. Yoshihiro Maru, 368 on base percentage, among others. Hanshin Tigers, defending Japan Series champions, are third, six games out of first. Don't let the distance fool you. They got off to a rough start. A few players had trouble at the beginning of the season, but this team could really be dangerous, especially with their pitching. Fourth place is the Yokohama DNA Bay Stars. Without Imanaga and Bauer, they've managed to remain competitive. Shugo Maki, Tyler Austin, Toshiro Miyazaki, still providing a lot offensively. They are one and a half behind Hanshin for the last spot in the postseason. Chunichi Dragons, not last for a change. They're looking much better. 22-year-old starting pitcher Hiroto Takahashi threw 119 innings, 17 starts, has an ERA of 0.98, win-loss record of 11-2. A lot of reasons to be excited for the future with this team. But at present, they are 7.5 out in the postseason race with 23 games left. Not this year. And the last place Tokyo Yakult Swallows. Munitaka Murakami is having another fantastic year, leading Central League with 23 home runs. But pitching is the problem. 
That's why they're in last place. In Pacific League, the South Bank Hawks continue to dominate. At 74 and 41, they have the best win percentage among all league leaders of the world. Magic number 15 with 25 games remaining on their schedule. The big story for the Hawks has been Kensuke Kondo, now in his second season with South Bank. Pacific League batting leader, 313. On base leader, 432. Slugging leader, 529. OPS leader, 961. Tied for second in home runs with 19. No doubt the league's most valuable player. Another big bat for the Hawks has been new arrival Hotaka Yamakawa, the league leader in home runs with 29, 10 more than number two on the list. And it's not just the hitting, Levon Moanello converted to a starter this year and is leading all Pacific League pitchers with a 164 ERA. Major League returnee Kohei Arihara is 11 and six with a 268 ERA. Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters are in second, a long ways back at 11 games, but this is a team that's coming off two consecutive last place finishes. Shinjo has done a great job bringing this team up. Power provided by Chusei Manami and Franmo Reyes. A good rotation with Takeyuki Kato, Sachiya Yamasaki, and Hiromi Ito. Third place, the Chibalote Marines holding the last postseason spot right now. Roki Sasaki has missed some time. He's only made 14 starts this year. But he's back now, ERA 225. Rakuten Eagles are three back from the last spot. Oryx Buffalo's three-time defending Pacific League champions are five and a half out. Losing Yamamoto last offseason was big, but we thought they had enough young talent to remain in contention. Looks now like they don't. Last place is the Cebu Lions, worst record in NPB at 38 and 79. In Korea, the KBO records for career home runs, hits, and strikeouts all came down this year. Fans have filled up the stands as the total attendance record was broken in the middle of August. The KBO is bigger than it's ever been before. The Kia Tigers lead the standings at 75 and 49. This team has missed the postseason in four of the last five years. No championship since 2017. But this year they've got 20-year-old infielder Do Young Kim, the youngest ever member of the 30-30 club, and at the moment the KBO leader in OPS. James Nail leads the rotation with a record of 12 and 5, and the KBO's second best ERA at 253. Samsung Lions are six and a half back in second place. Looks like the Tigers will probably take that number one seed with just 18 games to go. Number one seed is very important in the KBO. It means a trip to the Korean series and a two week break. The defending champion LG Twins are in third, just two and a half behind the Lions. Fourth place, Doosan Bears. Fifth place, KT Wiz. As of right now, those are the five teams in position for the postseason. Bottom half of the standings, and you're seeing that right. Hanwha Eagles are one place away from a playoff spot. Two and a half games behind the fifth place Wiz. The team that's finished no better than ninth place the last five years might be a postseason team this year. Lotte Giants, another team with a lot of hard luck recently, is right there with them. SSG Landers, Korean Series champions two years ago, are in the fight. Half a game behind the Eagles and Giants. Three games out in the postseason race. Dinos, four and a half back. Heroes looking like another last place finish. Eight and a half back in the playoff race. Kia Tigers third baseman Do Young Kim, as I've already mentioned, is the league's OPS leader at 1061. He's also second in home runs with 34, third in batting 345, fourth in on base percentage 419, first in slugging 642, and fifth in stolen bases with 36. Has to be considered the front runner for MVP at this point. In Taiwan, the CPBL first half champions were the Uni Lions, meaning they were the first team to punch their ticket to the CPBL playoffs. Two other spots up for grabs. And right now it looks like the CTBC brothers may grab that spot. 24 games left, they've got a three and a half game lead over the second place Rakuten Monkeys. Third place is defending Taiwan Series champions Wei Chuan Dragons, four games out. Fourth place, Uni Lions, five and a half out. Fifth place, the expansion TSG Hawks, seven games out. And in last place, a team that's used to being last, the Fubon Guardians, 10 games away from the top spot. In addition to the first half and second half champions, a third team will get an invite to the CPBL playoffs, the best team in the overall standings that does not win either half season title. In the overall standings, brothers lead the Lions by a half game at this point. If the season ended now, the brothers would go straight to the Taiwan series, and the Lions would host the Monkeys in a best of three playoff series. But the Lions are only half a game behind the brothers, Monkeys are only two and a half back. As for the Dragons, they are 10 back in the overall standings. Their best chance is to try and win the second half title, where they are only four games back. Guardians and Hawks are far back in both standings. Best to just wait until next year for those two. Hard to tell who will be the CPBL MVP this year. Usually it's pretty obvious, but no telling right now. 
Uni Lions pitcher Gulin Wei Young is the ERA leader at 166. Another Lions pitcher, Mario Sanchez, leads the CPBL with 12 wins. A Lions hitter, Che Xian Chen, is the batting leader at 368. Steven Moy of the TSG Hawks leads the way in home runs, 25, and RBI, 79. In Mexico, the matchup is all set for the Serie del Rey, the best of seven championship series for the LMB. Diablos Rojos del Mexico had, arguably, the best season in LMB history. The league turned 100 years old this year. 71 wins, 19 losses, 20 games ahead of the second place team. Trevor Bauer, an MLB Cy Young winner just four years ago, the ace of this team. Robinson Cano, a five-time MLB Silver Slugger, is their starting DH. Tomohiro Anraka, a Rakuten Eagles reliever last year, let go by the team because he had a problem with bullying other teammates, is the team's closer. Quite a controversial group, but MLB or NPB level players in the Mexican League on a team that was already one of the best before they arrived, you can understand why this team has been so dominant. Rojos breezed through the first two rounds of the playoffs, four games to one over the defending champions Pericos, a four game sweep over Leones, but then had their toughest challenge of the season in the South Championship Series. Fifth seeded Guerreros de Oaxaca built a 3 0 series lead over Rojos, including a walk off in game three. But Rojos won big in games 4 and 5, came back from a 9-1 deficit to win game 6, then walked it off on Sunday for a 3-2 win, completing an amazing comeback in the series. In the North Championship Series, top-seeded Sultanes de Monterrey 4 games to 2 over Tecolotes de los Dos Laredos, a walk-off in game 6 to seal the deal. Monterrey is headed to the Serie del Rey for the second time in the last three years. Rojos hold the most LMB titles with 16, but have not won it since 2014, 10 years ago. Last one for Sultanas came in 2018. They have 10 league titles. Game 1 is on Tuesday, September 3rd in Mexico City. Games 3, 4, and 5 in Monterrey, then back to Mexico City. Game 7, if necessary, will be Wednesday, September 11th, the latest possible end to the Serie del Rey. The Czech series is all set to begin. Semi-finals ended over the weekend. Two teams are left standing. One of those teams is 24-time champions Drassi Brno. All those titles have come since 1995. That's 24 league titles in 29 years. No team in the world has dominated in the last three decades like they have. But it hasn't been so easy recently. They've only won it three times in the last six years. But they go into this season as two-time defending champions. No problems in the semis. A four-game sweep over Eros Ostrava. Eros were the 2021 Czech Series champions, but had a rough time the last couple years. Second from the bottom a year ago. Bounced back this year, but they were no match for Drassi. Look at those scores. Drassi didn't just win. They destroyed Eros. Four games by a combined score of 41-4. to The other semifinal series wasn't as lopsided, but there was still one team that was clearly better. Hrosi Brno, four games to one over Eagles Praha. This sets up a rematch of the 2022 Czech series, the all Brno series between Drassi and Rossi. That was won by Drassi four games to two. This year, the two teams finished in a tie atop the regular season standings, with identical records of 25 and 10. Rossi has been led this year by Japanese import Toru Murata, a former Cleveland Indians and Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters pitcher, and of course catcher Martin Cervanka, the two-time reigning Extraliga MVP. Murata and Cervanka lead the league in wins above replacement for pitchers and hitters respectively. Will it be enough to dethrone the 24-time champions Drassi? We'll have to wait and see. Baseball Bundesliga is all ready for their championship series. In recent years, the Heidenheim Heidekep have been the team to beat. Four league titles in the last five years, six out of the last nine. But on Sunday, it was the 2022 champion Bonn Capitals who earned a spot in the final series. Heidenheim won the early game on Sunday to tie the series at two apiece, but Bond prevailed in Game 5, the second game of a doubleheader. All the games were pretty close. Good series. Bond moves on. The other series also went to five games. The Paderborn Untouchables went into Sunday down two games to one, but they won twice. Six to one in the early game and five to four in extra innings in Game 5. The championship series is best of five. It all begins this Saturday and Sunday with Games 1 and 2. Game 3 the following Saturday, if necessary games 4 and 5 on Sunday, September 15th. The Bond Capitals are two-time champions, having won it in 2018 and 2022. Paderborn Untouchables are six-time champions, but all those titles came between 1999 and 2005. 
One last league to talk about, the Honkball Hoofd Class in the Netherlands. Unlike the other European leagues, they are not ready for the final series just yet. They have just finished the first phase of the postseason, the 27 game round robin. And they finished in the same order as they did in the regular season. Neptune is first, Amsterdam second, HCAW third, DSS a distant fourth. The top three are the big three. Neptune has won the Holland series every year from 2013 to 2018. Amsterdam has claimed three of the last four. HCAW won it in 2022. Those four teams will be joined in the playoffs by the top two teams from the losers stage, Oosterhout Twins and UVV. Those two were clearly ahead of the other three teams in that group. The six team playoffs begin soon, but there is no schedule for it yet at this time. And that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.